everybody this is Marquette back with uh, another video this one is going to be uh, another Cold War Cotter um, called Don't Give Me Five this one is a little bit more difficult than the one that I did before but not too overly complex and we should be able to breeze through this so with this cotter we're going to be iterating over a range of numbers and when we iterate over those numbers, we're going to return however many numbers in that range do not include 5. So that's going to, whether it's just 5, 15, 55, 25, if it has a 5 in it at all, we're not adding it. So um, like I've said before, when I start these things, I kind of like to pseudocode it out. And I'm actually going to get rid of the function that they have here. And replace it with one of my own. I don't really like this return zero thing here. I'm just going to just turn it into an arrow function. I really like the look of arrow functions. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go with that. So I'm making my function. Don't give me five. Um, it contains two parameters, start and end. And there we go. So we have our function set up. So now I'll just uh, pseudocode it out and think about what I need to happen when I'm going through this. So we have to iterate over a range of numbers um, or loop through them. So loop through all the numbers, including the endpoints. Um, we're going to need a counter. Um, and that counter is going to pretty much let us know how many numbers we have in the range that does not have a 5 in it. Alright, and if the number doesn't have a 5 in it, we're going to increase the counter. I have a lot of typos here. <laughs> um, but that's good enough for me. I, I, I know what it says, but I'll, I'll, I'll just clean it up for anybody watching. There we go. And at the very end, we're going to return the counter. Can't forget to return the counter or it's not going to work. Okay, cool. So, First thing we need to do, I believe, is actually create the counter. I, I don't always pseudocode in order. I kind of try to, but sometimes I'm like, oh, you know what? This this thing I need to do, and I just kind of throw it in there. Um, so sometimes you'll see me pseudocode, and it won't necessarily be in order. Um, so like I said, I want to I want to create a counter first. So I'm gonna create a variable called a counter. Counter. I'm gonna set equal to zero because when we first start, none of the numbers are. But, you know, we're starting from zero. We can't start at a random number. We'll start at one. We have to start at zero. Um, and we're going to create a for loop for this. So I'm going to let I uh, let I equal start. So normally when you've had a for loop, you normally start at zero. Um, but we can't start at zero. Like if you look at the example here, we have four and 17 of the endpoints. Well, if we start at zero, we're gonna include zero, one, two, and three in our counter. And that's not within the range of four and 17. So we need to have our counter start, um, well, we need our for loop to start at um, the starting um, variable. And then as long as I is less than or equal to, the um, ending variable that that endpoint um, we're gonna keep doing the for loop and then when we loop through we're gonna increase I by one all right so we have our for loop set up we have um, part of our function going and now to get the functionality going inside of this for loop so we're gonna do a conditional statement so if we're going to say if I, so I'm going to use something here called the includes method. Um, it's a JavaScript method that essentially if something is included inside of an array or a string, then 
it's going to um, give us some results here. So if we, hopefully, sorry, includes method JavaScript. Cool. So you can see that it's an array and a string method. So we're gonna have to convert. Um, we're gonna have to convert our endpoints into a string or array for this to work. I think the easiest thing for us to do is to turn it into a string here. Um, and to do that, we're gonna use the to string method. So if I to string, uh, so make sure we call it includes. And since we're turning the the um, if it since we're turning I into a string, we also need to make sure that the data type that we're comparing it to is also a string. So if it includes five as a string, then we want to go ahead and um, well, we're pretty much going to omit this. So another thing that we're going to have to do is use this exclamation point here, this bang, and what that does set what essentially what this is reading if I turn into a string includes the number five but as a string if it does not include that then do this code here which is going to be to increase counter by one so if I if I does not include five, if, if I does not have five inside of it, we're gonna increase the counter by one. So um, in the example of one through nine, if the number is one, two, three, four, you know, all of those numbers leading up to five, it's gonna increase this counter. When it gets to five, it's not gonna do anything. We don't need an else statement to handle that or anything. We're just gonna say five, don't do anything. It's, it's gonna be like, oh, it includes a five. I have nothing else to do with it. The code's gonna continue. It's gonna loop again, it's gonna get to six and it's gonna increase the counter again. So with that said, the very last thing that we have to do here is we're gonna to need to return counter and so that's the return. This variable is going to increase as the for loop goes, and then we need to return that number. Um, and our code should work here. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. There we go. So we passed our first two tests. So as I stated before, Code Wars normally shows a number of sample tests, and then it will run as many tests as the um, creator made to make sure that you didn't kind of try to cheat your way or if something you know weird isn't going on with your code. So with that, we're gonna attempt, see what we get here. And there we go, we passed all 37 of our tests. Um, so yeah, to as a recap, we created our, um, our function here. We have a counter, we set it to zero. We have a for loop that starts at whatever the starting endpoint is. And as long as that number, is less than or equal to the ending endpoint. We're gonna keep running this for loop that is going to check to see if I um, include five. If it does not include five, we're gonna increase the counter by one, and then we're gonna increase I by one and continue the loop. And then at the end, we're just gonna return whatever number is inside of this counter variable. And that's it, that's what she wrote. So, um, yeah, this was a, a pretty good counter. It's not, like I said, it's not overly complicated. It's a good way to kind of get your, get your day going and kind of get coding. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully for anybody out there that's, you know, kind of learning, maybe a little intimidated by code or counters, hopefully this kind of shows you how to break them down and get a better understanding of them. I enjoy doing these counters. As I said before, I'm going to do more in the future. Uh, so, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I wouldn't um, be doing a good job as a YouTuber if I didn't ask you to like and subscribe to the, uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll definitely be doing more videos in the future. I, 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 like uh, I stated before that I was going to do um, videos on some of these JavaScript methods, so it might be good for me to co cover things such as toString and includes. Um, and I'll also be doing a video shortly on declaring variables in JavaScript. Uh, most of you, when you learn how to do JavaScript, probably learn to declare variables using var. Um, however, it is more than one way to declare a variable, especially with um, ES6 context, where they included let and const, which you see me uh, using here and here. 
and I'll I'll go over that and why it's important to uh, use other variables when coding. So, thank you. Hopefully, you enjoyed.